good evening and welcome to All About Sport, live from the top of the town studios in Conley Street, Cavan, on your local channel, cavantv.com. Each week we will continue to include a wide variety of sport from all around County Cavan. And if you would like your sport featured on All About Sport, simply contact drumlinmedia at gmail.com. This show will be live on the internet on cavantv.com every Wednesday evening at 7pm and on Smith's Cable Vision in Caventown. New departure for cavantv.com, we meet up with Will Govan, who is more famous for his role in the Begrudgers, but has an avid interest in the sport of fishing. And we now meet up with Will to talk about his passion. Yes, Louise, uh, we're with Will Govan, and of course, Will has been seen on our screens recently in the Begrudgers. And before we talk to Will, we might just take a view of an action in the Begrudgers. <laughs> Come here, Danny. Oh. Ah, how are you doing? Gemma, Tell how's me. things? Mwah. 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 What can I get you? I'll have a glass of red wine, please, Tommy. Sure. Oh, and uh, two pints for these two um, gentlemen. Ah, no, there's no need for that. Sure. No. And you, Gemma? Mm. Great. Nice and cold. I think that this calls for a celebration. Celebrate what? Why don't you come around here and pull your first pint of Guinness now, huh? As the new owner. What? what? I would love that. Yeah, well, that was Will and the Big Rogers, but now, Will, we're here to talk to you about your passion and you have many many strings to your bows you have the passion for fishing which we're here to talk to you about for or all about sport but you also have the interest in the moth magazine but maybe um you'll talk about your interest in fishing first and then we'll go on to some of your other um business if you want to call it interests and associations sure Brad. that's good to talk to you um I'm, we, I, I moved to Cavan about three and a half years ago with my wife and uh, young son. He was six months. And the um, main reason was um, for me was to fish. But obviously, you know, family life has other demands. And uh, my wife, Becky, certainly um, hadn't anticipated that. So I didn't get out very much. But from being a young child, I've always been fascinated, like so many people in in fishing and and wildlife. I actually grew up in a place called Denham and it's 15 miles from central London and that might sound like it's fairly built up but around London um, is the Green Belt and the Green Belt is a swathe of countryside and you know most people know the M25 is the big motorway that goes around London and the Green Belt surrounds that so I was a stone throw away from this motorway and the Greenbelt, which is actively like a kind of oasis um, for wildlife in an otherwise urban place. Um, but one of the great things about living in a place where there's lots of motorways is there are lots of gravel pits, lots of man-made lakes. So I grew up amongst that. Um, so very close to London, but also very close to lots of lakes and, uh, and places to fish. Now, well, we were on the set of the Begrudgers and well, people would see the end product and um, all the fun and, and excitement that's associated with, with the end product. But there's a lot of pressure and a lot of um, action on the set. So would you see fishing as a, a good form of relaxation after a lot of the, the detail work that's associated with producing a program like that? I, uh, well, I mean, undoubtedly. Uh, producing something like Begrudgers is huge fun. And it would be, it be, it, being involved in it is huge fun. And uh, there's a lot of hanging around and it's a lot of work, but it is ultimately fantastic. Um, so, uh, of course, fishing is a, is a wonderful way of, it's a wonderful way of relaxing. It's a wonderful way of enjoying the countryside. It's a wonderful, wonderful way of, of, um, of winding down. Um, but fishing, of course, people would see some of it possibly on, on television, but there's many facets to fishing. There are a number of different styles of fishing, different types of fish. So maybe you could elaborate on, on some of, of those just for the viewers' um, benefit. Yeah, well, when I was a kid, I got given a fishing rod and it was, um, it was a carp rod. It was about 12 feet long. It was a huge thing. I didn't really know how to use it. Um, 
But all I did was I got a size 12 hook. Um, we'll get into more details about this later on. And, uh, and a weight, like most people are familiar with a kind of small, um, it's a synthetic weight, it's not a lead weight, you can't use those anymore, but it's a small synthetic weight. I put that on and using a, um, a, a worm, you know, a common or, or, or garden worm, um, we would we would catch um, we would catch perch, and uh, the, the great thing the great so we would use very 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 simple tackle to catch fish, and um, the perch is a wonderful creature because it's incredibly game and it's made many many children incredibly happy. <laughs> so a lot of people think you might go go by a canal or a lake or a river and you'll see people with wheelbarrow loads of kit. You don't need all of that stuff, and so. When I was a child, it was very much the Huckleberry Finn style of angling. You just go out with your rod, you know, and a hook and a worm, and uh, you know, believe it or not, you can you can uh, you can catch fish. But of course, like I say, Brian, tons of different types of fishing. And uh, where I grew up, it was mainly coarse fishing. Obviously, around here, there's, there's tons of coarse fishing. So coarse fishing, you're generally um, talking about fish that live in, or spend all of their time in freshwater, i.e., in 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 rivers and lakes and they don't migrate so they're not um and they're not they're not members of the the salmon family um i.e trout and sea trout um and uh, and different subspecies so they fish like perch and roach and tench and carp and actually in this country people tend to refer to the pike as a as a game fish whereas where i come from it's more of a it's, it's called a, a, a coarse fish um so yeah of course there's lots of different types of angling but when I was a child, or still now, um, I'm a great advocate of, of a very, very simple approach. Thanks, Louise. We're here with Brian Weber in Sports World and Town Hall Street in Cavan. Just the smell of this place is incredibly exciting. And I remember as a kid going to my local tackle shop and just kind of smelling the, you know, smelling the kit. I dare say smelling the maggots. I don't know maggots. Maggots, <laughs> probably yes. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a very, it's a very kind of evocative smell. Yes. Yeah. Um, Brian, the whole point of this is you've got tons and tons of kit here and uh, I suppose I want to make it clear that you don't need necessarily tons of kit to enjoy fishing. But um, that tell us about the kind of punter that comes into your shop and tell us about the kind of fishing that you can do in Cavan. Well, Cavan, there's a, a, a big selection of fishing really here. We, as you know, there are so many lakes. I think there's over 360 lakes. and. Um, we got everything from even carp here, carp, bream, tench, right. roach, yeah. perch, and pike. We get an awful lot of um, Germans and French for the pike. Yeah. And uh, also we have quite a lot of um, foreign nationals here who live here, um, Eastern Europeans who love fishing yeah. for pike. And um, also we have trout. We have several rivers just down the road there, uh, the Annalee yes. is full of trout, yeah. even the small river running through the, the, the town here, Yes. The, 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 the school boys are catching trout up to three or four pound. Well, we saw them just as we were driving up, um, so that's the, that's the river in the town itself. That's called the Kenny Pottle, which is, comes from the, uh, the urn actually, through Balignan. Right. Uh, they're having great fun there, but um, for the average person who comes in here are sort of uh, they're just um, they just enjoy a bit of fishing. Yes. Um, we did at one time get a lot of English people who did match fishing, yes. which is another specialised yes um, fishing thing. But generally, we get a lot of casual fishermen in. Yes. Okay. Who just wants a rod or reel. So look, this is a kind of. I mean, you can just look at any number of things we've got here. We've got those very big spoons, I suppose, are for pike. They're for pike. Um, they would be for trawling out the back of the boat. You have rubber baits, which are for pike. Yeah. And um, these over here are very good for pike. You've got your savage baits and uh, samo. And very, very popular baits. But they're. And then. What about that? That's a pike bait, isn't that's it? That's a pike bait that you would trawl out the back of a boat. And. Um, Actually, the French and the Germans are very partial to them type of thing. And then you have your spoons. Right. Um, spoons are very, very popular. Copper spoons. Right. Your pheasant's eye. And um, 
there's so many different baits now, you know, that, uh, it's, uh, that, that they all look extremely good. And so you're likely, to, with that kind of kit, you're, you're looking at catching pike, perch, trout. Yeah, well, with the, the perch and the trout, you're onto the nets, yep. these smaller things. Yep. And um, then we also do the fly fishing, so we yep. do all the flies. Yep. And um, so you really go out and um, basically when people come in, they just buy um, a cheap rod. You can get set up for under 40 euro. You okay, know? so let's have a look at that. So we've got a selection of rods here. Yeah. So I'm coming in, I've never fished before. Brian, what do I need? Basic kit to get me into fishing, to well, catch a fish. A basic kit you can get for 29 euro. Fantastic. You know, um, something like that. Now you can go out fishing with that. Yeah. You could even use it for a little bit of pike. Perch, so, so what length is this? That there would be about uh, seven foot. Okay. That's a seven foot rod. But we do them seven, eight, nine, and ten foot. Okay. So I, what I could, I could suspend a bait on here with a worm or a maggot. You can. All yeah. you need then, you have your line already on your yeah. reel. Yeah. Uh, that's ampedex, so you can put your handle either side. Yeah. It's a two piece rod. Yeah. So it comes apart for carrying. Fantastic. And then all you need is a float, hooks, yeah. and weight. Fantastic. And, worm, and you're away fishing. And equally, I could stick a spinner on there. Put a spinner, you could yeah. put a trace on and a spinner for a pike, or yeah. you could just put a, a, a map and you can fish away for the trout and the perch. So fantastic. So for basically for 30 quid, yeah. Yeah. I've got enough kit to go down to the river and catch a fish. You can go down. We also do the, um, the telescopic kits, which okay. are already, there's tapes in them, rods and really. So that's basically, so you're yeah. talking about an extendable rod, so extendable you can sling it in the boot. Yeah. And yeah, that's it. Break carrying is handy. Fantastic. Now, tell me a bit about this because this is you've got bags of bait here, that, and that's for the match fishermen, is it? That's well, they're they're pleasure fishermen, a lot of them. But basically, the match fisherman uses the break crumb, and this is additives. So we'll take a look at this. Right. Um, so this is this is serious stuff. Isn't yeah. It? So they, they, is, they do this buy is them for catching bream, is it? They catch bream, tench, roach, hybrids. Yeah. Um, and you literally lob this stuff out and you make kind of a, a ball out of it, do you? Well, that's the pure breadcrumb, okay. that's the additives which is very sweet smelling yeah. and then what you do, you mix them together yep. into a ball, you get a mixing ball yeah. and you try to keep it where you're going to fish, you keep it tight and right. then you, um, that brings in the fish and hopefully they, they, they fill these up and they, at the end of the day they weigh them. Yep. And uh, So let's, we touched on this earlier on, let's have a look at one of these keep nets and this is, this is for you. Fisherman who wants to keep a fish keep and then fish. see how many fish or what weight they are that they, they, they've achieved at the end of the and day. And then return them to the water. Good. Um, there's different lengths of them, obviously from the point of view of if you're on a high bank, yeah. you'd obviously need a longer. Yeah. But you can buy one of these for uh, 10 euro and uh, it would hold a lot of fish. How many fish might you get in something like this? Oh, you'd, you'd, you'd get uh, 130, 40 pounds of fish. And do people really actually catch that, that many fish? Oh, they could do on a day, yes, yeah, on a day. And then all you do, you put a bank stick onto that, screw yeah. it onto that, yeah. and you can put it at different angles, so you can yeah. put it into the bank. And then the idea is at the end of the day, they're released safely back into the water. They're released safely back into the water. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. And we're yeah. going to be talking to the lads from the inland fisheries about fishing responsibly and handling yeah. fish. Do you yeah. think most of the punters that come in here they care about wildlife and and, yes. and, and, and yeah. fishing. Yes, and like handling fish is very important because pike are very, um, they get very um, temperamental. Right. And you just can't throw them back, you have to put them back very carefully into the water, you know. But, um, fantastic. Okay, so we're going to go down to the to the river bank, we're hopefully going to catch a fish. <laughs> and, um, we look forward to coming back here and um, sampling some more of your your products. Yes. Well, Louise, I'm here at Killykeen, and uh, a lot of you will recognise it. There's the footbridge. It's a beautiful morning, and I'm in a very fortunate position of being able to come fishing with a couple of guys from Inland Fisheries Ireland. This is David Burns. How are you, David? Hello, well, how are you? Great, and how are you getting on? Fine, thank you very much. I have a few small fish, but uh, things have gone quiet now. Brilliant. Now you've got a writhing box of red maggots here. And what are you hoping to catch with these? Yeah, red maggots are a very effective bait for coarse fish, and then we're hoping to catch some roach, some hybrids, some bream, maybe some skimmers, and some perch. Fantastic. And uh, so let's have a look 
at the kind of kit that you've got. Okay, well this is basically what we have here. We have a 10 foot feeder rod. Right. Okay, to which we have attached the end tackle. I have a six pound main line. Okay. This six pound line, so that means that you could in theory catch a fish of um, six pounds and the line wouldn't break, is yeah, that it? You can, uh, you can okay. hold it by a weight of six pounds okay. on that without okay. breaking on that. Okay. 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 So this part here, I have a water nut, four turn water nut, to which is attached um, this extension. Yeah. And to that I have attached a feeder. Okay. Okay, now yeah. in the feeder what we yeah. do is we load that up with ground bait like this. Yeah. And we put some maggots in the center. Okay. And we just like a sandwich. Okay. And we fill that up. Yeah. And that's cast out into the swim. Okay. The, so the swim being the area that we're fishing. The area that yep. we're fishing, okay. exactly. So yeah. that's it. So we're set up on the station there. We have the rod rest. And the end line then is slightly lighter. Yeah. And on the end of that then we have a size 14. You can't see that probably, but it's a fairly small hook. Okay, so it's a size 14 hook. All right. Yep. Okay, and on that we attach either one or two maggots. Okay. So I'm just going to try one maggot this time. Okay. And see whether that will bring the desired result. Okay, so the idea is that that little plastic container is going to distribute that bait, and then the fish are not going to be able to tell the difference between the maggots that are swimming around from that container and the maggot with the hook on it. Exactly. On the end of your line, is that it? Yeah, that's okay. exactly. Now and what that's, I'm doing is yeah. I'm lining up the mark on the far bank here okay. I'm going to cast through the whole time. So okay. basically I'm picking uh, there or off to the right hand side yeah. or off the, off, the, off the life buoy there. Okay. There's a gap in the tree. So I'm going okay. to cast that all the time. And I have the line flipped up okay. here, which yeah. means I'm casting at the same distance the whole time. Okay. So right. I'm just wind and tight. You're casting the same distance the whole time, so you know that that's where your, your bait is kind of landing each exactly. time. Exactly. What happens is as the bait falls out of the feeder, it goes onto the bed okay. of the lake. Yeah. Okay, and fish cruising up and down will congregate over okay. the bait and they will start to feed there. Yeah. And once a number of fish start to feed, it generally attracts other fish in. So hopefully that will get the swim working back again and uh, we can catch a few fish. Fantastic. And you've got your landing net here in anticipation. Absolutely. Right? And we touched on this before in the tackle shop. You've got your keep net here. So where in principle you could put a lot of fish and then release them at the end of the day, is that it? That's it. Well some people, you know, just, just fish on the basis of catch the fish and every fish they catch individually the they release back immediately the water. But some anglers like to um, you know keep the keep the catch in the net and at the end of the day what you do is you weigh the weight of fish that you have. Yeah. And you know some people will, you know, the best weight that they would have caught would be 30 pounds. Yeah. And the next day they go out it could be 40 pounds. Okay. So personal best would be 40. Yeah. Okay. Everybody that is involved in course angling, they strive for the magic ton they call it. The magic ton, so what's the ton? So 100 is 100 pounds of fish. 100 pounds of fish. 100 pounds of fish. And that can be made up of lots of little fish. Absolutely. You know, That's like extraordinary. If you have bream a 5 pound weight, well obviously yeah. it takes less than both yeah. and it goes up the small fish of okay. the country. Okay. And you tend to stay in the same place on the bank? Absolutely. Well, yeah. with this kind of fishing, that's what you do. It's not as mobile. Yeah. Uh, once you have your station set up, you know, your, your fishing station uh, and you're feeding it for that the whole time. is. Sometimes it can get time for the swim to start to work. Like, I mean, you could be there for a while and, yeah. you know, it takes for the time fish to, to move in, yeah. Absolutely, to draw the fish in. Well, so, yeah, to, you, w w once you're course fishing like this, generally you, okay. you stay in the same station. Like okay. So, when you're, if you're driving through your local town and you see uh, a man or a woman sitting by the canal, um, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a rod and a, a sandwich and a flask of tea, this is generally the kind of fishing that they're doing. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in County Cavan, like I mean, and again, there are a lot of lakes in the Cavan area, supposedly one for every day of the year, 365. Yeah. Coarse fishing is certainly the most abundant type of fishing okay. that you have, and uh, the species that we mentioned are all very popular. Okay. So, again, their outline, the um, uh, Inland Fisheries Ireland has produced a guide of yeah. all of the lakes, you yeah. know, and there's a lot of information on the website as well at uh, Fishing Ireland. Uh, fantastic. And this is world class fishing, isn't it? I mean, Cavan is famous for this kind of fishing, isn't it? It right? is. It's not just Irish people that yeah. enjoy it, but people travel from all over the world to sample, to sample the course fishing. A lot of UK anglers come, obviously, from England and yeah. uh, other areas. Uh, and Dutch anglers come, you know, to sample the coarse fishing, but pike fishing draws people from all over Europe, uh, you know, and even from the United States to sample the quality of pike fishing. In That's area. brilliant. And what do you need to observe as somebody, say I, g I get my kit, my basic setup from Brian in the tackle shop, I come down to the lake shore, what do I need to observe? Where am I allowed to fish? And, uh, you know, uh, what, what, are, what are the, what's the legislation involved? 
How easy is it? Okay, look, it's very, very, very simple. And as I said, like I mean, outlined in the brochures and on the website, yeah. all the lakes that have public access, and that can be across private lands with the yeah. goodwill of the local farmers, who are absolutely fantastic at facilitating access, you know, like yeah. through the lakes, and they love to see people going and enjoy the fishing. Or it can be through the um, state forestry, uh, and, 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 and like like, like in the King Forest Park here, yeah. for example. You know, like, so there are state fisheries, private fisheries. Uh, and as I said, there are areas with public access as well. So, yeah. like it's very easy. Like I mean, and uh, you know, people once they get to the lake, then what they have to observe, depending on the on the discipline that they're following. For course angling, um, there are legislative requirements. And again, like I mean, you know, not to get too hung up on the legislation, yeah. but like I mean, the fact is that people need to be aware of the fact. Like you can't just take that. Can only fish with two rods. Okay. okay. Um, Do I need license? No, there are no license or permit okay. requirements for the course fishing. And yeah. uh, that's the great thing about it, it's free. And once okay. you once you purchase your gear basically like me, you can go to any of the public access water okay. and fish away to your heart's content. Okay. Um, again, from the point of view of uh, legislation, it is possible to take four fish if you wish to do so. Yeah. Most course anglers will release them back they release to the water. Them back, yeah. For pike fishing as well, again, covered by legislation and protected by legislation. Uh, you can't use all methods. You can you, you can use all methods for fishing for pike, with the exception of live bait. You can't use live bait. Right. You can't be. In so you can't actually kind of hook up a live fish, or or any other animal for that matter. No. Like a frog. No. 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 Well, well, live baiting. Well, li 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 the use of of, of 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 live fish as bait is is, is prohibited by law. But okay. again, there are lots That's of other good. methods. Not to get hung up on that. You can use dead bait. You can use spinning. You know, yeah. like I mean, you control. Yeah. You can fish from the yeah. boat. You can fish yeah. from the shore. Okay. So lots of opportunities okay. there for that. So, so what you're saying, what you're saying in a nutshell, is not only is this a world-class destination for fishing, but it's the easiest thing in the world to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, as I said to you, like I mean, you know, the, the extent of water in the Cavan area and throughout Ireland generally is, you know, like I mean, at any time you're no more than a couple of minutes from some so some expanse of water, whether that's on the coast or lakes or rivers, you know, reservoirs, canals, whatever it is. So, like I mean, fishing is generally accessible on that. And again, it's it, you know, you know, you can just go to the lake and fish yourself. But there are a lot of associations, right. in, in, you know, in the local areas that can right. be of great assistance. And I think when people are starting to fish, it's a case of well, how do I actually do what I'm supposed to yes. do? And it's nice to be able to tap into that yeah. network of expertise in the local angling associations, Absolutely. you know, uh, through even the federation of the National Coast Fishing Federation of Ireland or the Irish Angling Development Alliance, and they have clubs affiliated all over the country. So no matter where you are in the country, you should always be able to find an association and the members will be only too happy to assist you in, 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 in developing your online skills. That's fantastic. David, what I want you to do is to catch a fish, okay? okay well. Because I want you to tell us how... No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to tell us how important it is to know how to correctly handle a fish once it's caught and put back into the water, oh. okay? And in the meantime, we're going to have a chat with Ted Sweeney, who also works with Inland Fisheries Island. And Ted, you've got a spinning rod. Um, That's right, Bill, yeah. Put the spinning rod here. Okay. Um, just a nice light rod. I like a small little MEPS spinner bait there. Fantastic. Let's have a look at this. Okay. So, this is. Okay, so this is a little lure, and this is designed to imitate a fish in the, water. In the water. Right. Yeah. So it's got a little kind of silver, it's like a little silver spoon, is it, going around a kind of cylinder and um, and three hooks. That's the setup. And there's a swivel here, and that's to stop the line getting tangled Absolutely. up. Absolutely, to stop the line starting okay. up getting tangled. And I guess, Ted, this type of fishing's always appealed to me because it means that you can really roam around. You're not, yeah. I mean, like uh, David's there sitting, he's got his table and he's got a, quite a, a lot of kit. But what do you need to, to fish um, with a spinner? Yeah, so and a just what we have in our hand and maybe a, a little bag with a little, uh, Box of of of, of, um, of, of, of um, different types of lures. Let's just see what you've got here. That's a great. So, okay, let's just look at some of these. Now look at that fellow there. So, what would you want to be catching with that? Well, again, that's probably more for pike. Uh, yeah. Um, probably pick up a pike, small pike, and that probably even bigger pike. And that's some yeah. kind of a plug, is it? Plug what you call it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Test it, and then you got a. So you got a rubbery kind of fellow here that's right. and that, that's also what's that also yeah. for pike yeah, I mean, fantastic they're, 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 they're called the Tasmanian red devil they're, they're good chance for maybe a throat on one of them as well yeah. and they're rather beautiful actually yeah. aren't they yeah. oh, lovely yeah. things yeah. lovely lovely things fantastic and 
So in this in this water here, we're obviously we're at Killikeen, and so David's after catching roach and bream and coarse fish. But with the spinning rod, you could catch a perch. Yeah, I think it's a good chance of picking up a perch on one of them there. Possibly down near the bridge, there would be a good spot for a perch. Maybe a small pike. Yeah. And the possibility, if you, if you were lucky enough, maybe a, maybe a trout. Fantastic. Yeah. And there are some big trout in here, aren't there? There are indeed. There have been trout to eight, ten pounds taken here, especially down the any side, side of the the hook to here. Yeah. That's wonderful. Are you into a fish, there, David? No. No. Um, well, look, I think it's about time that I just. I'll just show you how it's done. Too. Absolutely, you're the you're the expert <laughs> here. And uh, any luck, I'm going to catch one of these large, um, these twenty-pound trout. Um, so I'm just I'm just I'm just bringing the line in here now, Ted. And this is just the the, the motion of the spinner is imitating a fish swimming through the water, Absolutely. and that hopefully is going to attract a. Uh, Going to attract a fish, so no luck on the on the first cast. And what kind of line would I have on here? Uh, so just about eight or ten pound breaking strain. There, eight or ten pound breaking strain. Okay, but if there was a fish larger than that, then um, you, you do. There is a kind of clutch in the reel that lets the line out. That's isn't right, that right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Fantastic, that's brilliant. Thank you, Ted. So what do you think you've got on the line? I'd say it's probably a roach. But I may be wrong. It's a roach. Well, and I'm going to wet my hands, isn't that right? That's the right Absolutely. thing to do. Isn't it? So we can just. Will I pick him up? Yes. Why not? So he's on the line now. Look at that. Is the pretty. Hang on. That is the prettiest thing. Oh! Ow. Oh. Be very gentle with him. Yeah. So I think the main thing is we just get him off. Absolutely. Off the. Uh, off the line as quickly as possible. Shows how it's done, David. Back into the, into the water. So you caught him on one of these little red maggots. That's it. And look at his that. eyes are beautiful, aren't they? As I said to you there, the um, the uh, swim had gone quiet. Yeah. So what I did was I just lengthened the hook length. And there okay. he is there now. Just there he goes. And off he swims. And now you just use something quite... So this is a little... This thing here, what do you call this? That's a disgorger. Okay. So this okay. is an essential bit of kit, isn't it? Oh, right? absolutely, yeah. yeah. And you, so what happens, you stick that in and the hook gets caught on this... Yeah, that's on this exactly little thing. What, you, what right? you do is you slip it onto the line and twist. And that slips down onto the shank of the hook, down yeah. onto the gape. And then what you do is just a slight little push and it releases. Yeah, okay. So the whole idea is to cause as, as least kind of trauma to the fish as possible. Absolutely, that's the most important thing, yeah. Now what are, I've heard talk of like barbless hooks. Yeah. Is that, are they commonly used? In, Absolutely, I mean, yeah, yeah, they are indeed, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anglers now have, uh, have adopted, you know, a huge amount of measures, like I mean, to ensure that fishing is carried out in the, yeah. in the most fish friendly manner. We talked about the barbless hooks in, um, in, uh, in with, 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 with Brian, yeah. and so that basically means that it's easier to take off the fish, but by the same token, it's more difficult to catch a fish, so it's in a way it's more sporty. Yeah, well, yeah. well it, it, it's probably not. It, it, it's what, once you hook a fish, yeah. you know, the fact that the barb is on obviously it, it, it makes it harder yeah. for the fish to get off, but yeah. like, I mean, there's still a little bump on the hook, like I mean, and once the pressure is kept on the fish, yeah. It stops it, but look, I mean, if you lose an odd fish now and again, that doesn't make any yeah, difference. It's exactly. getting the bite and it's, you know, exactly. contacting the fish and, you know, you land quite a few as well. So yeah. that's the most important yeah. thing. Well, what I've always thought is so nice about fishing, um, and as far as I'm concerned, a good day is when you don't lose any, any tackle, but it's just being able to enjoy the landscape and, um, and there's so much wildlife about, isn't there? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, just with 
an awful lot of people say, like, I mean, oh, you're going fishing, and I, I couldn't sit there doing nothing all day. Yeah. I mean, when you're sitting in the swim like this, you're working all the time, and like, yeah. you know, when you're getting the bites, you're concentrating, watching the tip, yeah. you know, and so the fish can be very finicky. The bites can be very, very quick, so they can. Yeah. So they can be very hard to hook sometimes. Yeah. But even when things slow down, um, you know, like when you're chopping and changing, looking at do, doing different yeah. things, yeah. as I said, yeah. and just after lengthening in the hook, the length there. Yeah. But the wildlife that's here, like I mean, you just see that. Like I mean, sometimes you're sitting here, you're not catching any fish, and quite honestly, you don't really mind. Yeah. It's just you know seeing nature for what it is. You know, swans yeah. and coots and. Yeah. Birds and otters and yeah. all different wildlife, squirrels, yeah. the whole lot. Like I mean, and in a setting like this, it's absolutely fantastic. Like, I mean, it's just it's heaven. Well, that's it. That's it in a nutshell, really, isn't it, dude? It's heaven. Wonderful. Any luck there, Ted? Nothing happening here. I'm looking at that. Piece of line. The pressure is on there. David caught a fish. Oh, I'm sure you can rustle up. <laughs> it really is a magical spot, and there's so many like it. Indeed, that's the truth. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, the All Ireland was held here over the weekend, and there was a juvenile championship, and there was uh, the seniors as well. I think yeah, up to 150 anglers fished in there. 150 anglers. Yeah. Fantastic. And they travel from all over the country to partake in it, you know, Fantastic. and uh, travel from abroad as well. And a lot of UK anglers come over to visit. Fish wonderful, there, yeah. wonderful. So actually, and it has been in, in the past, and it still is a, a major reason for people to come to Calvin. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's, 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 a, it's a huge natural resource, and it's one of the best resources that Calvin has. I mean, there's literally hundreds of lakes, you know, a lot of them underfished and underutilized. And there are probably spots that haven't even been fished yet. It's incredible. Spots that haven't even been fished and fished that have never been caught. <laughs> Certainly by me, anyway. <laughs> I think we'll get this line back in the water with us. Let's see if we can get another one to oblige. If they're gone, I'll be good coming. There. Just fill the feeder again. Few maggots. Brilliant. It in. Well, David, thanks very much yeah. indeed, and uh, well, William, I'm very much look forward to fishing with you in the future. <laughs> so, Louise, it's been a fantastic morning here in Killykeen, and now it's back to you. In the studio. Yeah, the that brings to an end all about sport for this week from the top of the town studios in Conley Street Cabin. I will be back again next Wednesday evening at the same time to bring you more sport on CavanTV.com. Thanks to Will for taking the time to speak with us on the programme this evening. Cavan is unique in Ireland with having so many lakes and at least fantastic choice for people who have the interest in fishing. So get your fishing rods out. All About Sport was produced by Brian Daly and Michael Goldrick and the show was directed by David von Standen. If you want your sport featured on the programme, send an email to drumlamedia at gmail.com. Stay with CavanTV.com is up next as our weekly music show, The Green Room, presented by the gorgeous Paul Cox. Until next Wednesday at 7, it's goodbye from me, Louise O'Reilly.